All right. One thing we talk about here a lot is make it to the NBA because every kid wants to go to the NBA. And this is a stat I don't know if you know, but less than 5,000 players have ever played one second in the NBA. Wow. Isn't no, that a I tiny number? So you have a better incredible. chance of getting struck by lightning work. Yeah, incredible. Incredible. And I see Bud's training kind of similarly, right? Because it is such a grind. There is such a small uh, percentage that make it through. So I want to kind of, you know, everyone's looking for the prescription to make of it to course, the NBA. Yeah. First, D1. Everyone's played D1, but then everyone wants to go to the NBA. But yeah. for Bud's, it's, you know, for people that have seen um, the reality TV shows, taking kids through it, or G.I. Jane, or, or many other yeah. things, like, yeah. It is a slog. And a question I want to ask you is, could you take just an average civilian, like let's say, take a senior from Evergreen High School that's just an average athlete in the football team. Yes. Can you train a civilian, just anyone off the street, to make it through buds, or is it a nature versus nurture thing? Like do you have to have little, something inside you? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of both. And I, I don't say that as a cop-out I, I, because there's some things that, that very much parallel what you're talking about with the NBA. Look, but for the few people that have – otherworldly drive and then gifts as well you know your time your spud web right or something like that there's a prototype of who makes it to that level of the game it's usually not you know the the, the scrawny never going to be able to put weight on it's a it's an archetype physically that has to come out of a package i'm all for hard work but you've been around nba players i've been around a lot of pro football players and there's times where I'm like, man, God decided who's playing on Sunday. I mean, this is just like I was at Syracuse when Donovan McNabb, Marvin Harrison and Dwight the Freak Freeney were there. Dwight Freeney showed up in that locker room. You're like, that dude is going to be playing on Sunday. I don't right. care what his work ethic is. His hands are like pie plates. He can lift more weight than is in this gym. And he's just mean and like understands the game. You know what I mean? So you're just like there's a component there that I think is very hard to get around at like you're saying at the absolute tip of the pyramid buds is interesting that way because there's almost like a body it's not a type but whether it's genetics or metabolism or how your you know tendons are put together the ability to withstand abuse at a certain level has to be there right. but there are guys at the program that you you could tell like god if i could just take the heart out of this you know spirit and put it in this body they'd make it. And so there's people whose bodies just won't tolerate the abuse. I mean, they get, you know, shoulder injuries or stress fractures, or they can't keep themselves from overheating, or they get pulmonary stuff. I mean, just, there's a whole lot of genetics that does go into, and it's all different body types. I mean, we had guys that looked like they needed a note from mom to be serving in the military, and they were just tougher than the guy that looked like Michelangelo just chiseled them out of marble. So, so it was all different types. Um, but there has to be a base level of your body can endure what we're going to ask it to do. Okay, so let's say that's set. Now move that out of the way. The whole rest of the program is from here up. Mm -hmm. So when you say, can I take an evergreen, you know, your average or even a good athlete performer at, at, at evergreen and make them a seal, I would say, how much time do I have with them? And it'd be very hard, I think, to supersede you know, the coaches, parents, mentors, pastors, experiences they've had, jobs they've maintained or not, um, that all leads to this personality that's going to make it through the program. You, you know, my class started with 180 some odd guys. We graduated 22. And out of those 22 that were there on Friday, I, I, I tell this story a lot. And I'll, I'll like check my language when it comes to it. But out of those 22 that graduated, I think 21 absolutely knew they were going to be there on that Friday. I, I was one of those. I, I went to SEAL training. I'm like, I'm going to be a SEAL. I don't care what they put in front of me, what they do to stop me, who says I can't, what whatever the crucible is, I'm going to figure out a way to go through it, under it, over it, blow it out. Like, I'm going to be a SEAL. This is just the price I need to pay. I think one person out of 22 was like, holy cow, I made it. You know, you know like it's sort of surprised themselves. I think for the most part, the people that show up and do well in that place knew they were going to. They're just like, I've got the drive. Nothing they're going to do is going to stop me. And let's see what happens. I'm going to get in there and grind it out.